all right, tell me, so who you who are you excited to see here, Nick? What's on the docket? I know you're a very prepared man. Who are you eyeing for the Bears and just wanting to watch in general? Yeah, so first off, there's going to be a lot of guys there on even day one, right, when I get there, that have either played against Caleb Williams in terms of uh, just some cornerbacks I want to talk to. And then also a lot of his teammates are going to be there at the Shrine Bowl. So I'm um, looking forward to having those interviews. But in terms of just the, pra- the practices that I'll be there watching in person, one of the guys, and look, the Bears can always look to add guys on the interior defensive line, especially with Justin Jones, his contract's expiring, and yep. you know Billings being an older guy, but he played well last season. A guy, Leonard Taylor from Miami, you guys, interior defensive lineman. He didn't play a lot of three-tech, but I think he's definitely capable of it. When I was watching his games, the get-off is there, something that you want to have if you're going to have a dominant um, three-tech position, but a guy that when you talk to the, the the Shrine Bowl director, Eric Galacco, he said this guy could be a first-round talent. So anytime you get that level of play in one of these kind of um, all-star games, you're going to be highlighting them. Another guy, and I want to see, Mark, if this name, if, if, if you know him, Malik Washington. Of course I know Malik okay. Washington, the former Wildcat transfer to Virginia. Little undersized, but has some speed, and he's, he's, he's blown up at Virginia. Yeah, he definitely has, and that it probably goes against the, the model type of wide receiver that the Bears want to have, one of the bigger guys, but productive, can run all the routes, and he's just really tough, you guys. Oh, Whether on. We're going to get another small guy? Come on. Yeah, Stop but it. they just need guys that will Stop catch it. the ball. They need guys yeah. that will catch the okay. ball. But he's someone that I'm going to be looking forward to watching, especially in the one-on-ones. And he did lead the FBS in receptions and don't, fourth in receiving yards. Don't listen to Lawrence dogging <laughs> Malik Washington. Let's dude. draft another 5'8 receiver. Cool. That's that's really worked out so well for us. The there's there's going to be some big guys, too. I think there's going to be more of those bigger wide receivers in the Senior Bowl, which I'll also be going to. Yep. But a guy that I'm going to be highlighting and watching uh, throughout my time in Frisco, Texas. And then... Jatavion Sanders. Tyreek Hill's 5'10". Keep going. It's true. He is. He's very so good, too. Very good. Are you good at football? Draft Florence. Yeah, draft, draft Florence. Uh, Jatavion Sanders, he is the tight end from Texas. And this is a guy, look, if you're looking to complement what Cole Komet can do is that inline tight end, Jatavion's going to be more of that receiving, receiving threat. He was, look, most targets without a drop, 67 in Texas, had 45 or 7, 682 yards. He gets a lot of yards after the catch. If you're asking him to block, that's probably not the best way to utilize him, but he is a guy that will stretch the field vertically. And if you're just looking at different types of weapons, whether it's Justin Fields or Caleb Williams or whoever is a quarterback in 2024, that's going to be another guy that I'm looking forward to watching because he really runs like a big wide receiver, but he is, he is a tight end. And if he can just work a little bit on his blocking, then you get a guy that can really be just a threat in the run game can obviously stretch you vertically, but is somebody that could definitely help a football team in 2024. Biggest need for the Chicago Bears to come out of this draft with? I think you need to address the center position. Um, if they're not going to go that the free agency route, like you need to come away with a center that's going to be not just there to you know help the 2024 season, but someone that you can have there long term. Um, there are too many plays last season where plays were there to be made. Receivers were open. Uh, whether it's Lucas Patrick or maybe Dan Feeney at times, it, the, the line just didn't hold up. So if you're looking to really come out of this draft with, with somebody just stabilizing the interior of that offensive line, like I'm looking at centers being one of those those high priority positions. Well, until we can move up into the second round, whether it's with a trade back of our early picks or a trade of Justin Fields and jumping into the second round potentially, like how can you trust a third round center or later yeah. to be your starting center? That's kind of where I, you know, I, I want them to draft a center. But can I trust him to be ready? Mm-hmm. And we've had enough problems at the center position sure. the last few years. It, it's um, I would look if I'm going to invest in that position, you want to do it. I, I'm not looking at round three. Obviously, they need to get a day two that that round two pick first if they want to try to get somebody in that range. There's but, been a lot of good round two centers sure. here in the last couple of years. And you know what? Uh, at the senior bowl, Jim Dre, the tight ends coach, he'll be coaching the national team offensive linemen. Jackson Powers Johnson, the Oregon offensive lineman, he's going to be there. And last time the Bears had an up-close look at, at some of those guys at the Senior Bowl, they got Darnell right yep. and with Luke Getze being there. So I think that's going to be a great opportunity for the Bears to really look at some of these, these top seniors in the country in, in, in Mobile, Alabama, to really look to solidify that position. So with Jackson Powers Johnson, I've started my slander campaign of the 
early wide receivers on Twitter and were making a lot of jokes like they hate puppies. They put ketchup on their hot dogs, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody came in the comments and said, Jackson Powers Johnson hates puppies. And Uh. his mom came into the comments and was like, not the puppies. So (laughs) we're we're already in her ear. (laughs) Future bear Jackson Powers Johnson making some headway with Mama, mama, power. Is, is there literally anything in your life that can bring you more joy than when your stupid things on Twitter gets all <laughs> the way to, to a player's mother? <laughs> nothing, nothing. You're, you're being talked about at the Powers Johnson dinner yes. table. Yep. There's yep. some guy on Twitter. His name's Greg Braggs. He works for something called CHGO. We're, 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 if we're, the family, if their family is down there, sabotaging his draft stock. If they're there in Mobile, I'm so gonna bring you. Yeah, up. bring gonna, it up. Bring it up. We, we we had a nice little exchange. I, I want to re-ask the question, though, or at least quibble with you guys. You really don't think the center of all the things Gary I, Ross, the Bears need. I would say wide receiver. Okay. That's my answer. Think of we, it, right now, with, with Darnell Mooney on the oh. way out, yeah, of course they need a center. Um, But I would say wide receiver. When you've got Shane Waldron coming in and you look at the wide receivers they had, Ben Fennell just – pointed out, you know, the type of wide receivers he thinks would fit well in this offense. Right now, you just have DJ Moore. Tyler Scott, you know, uh, he's a development guy here over the next couple years. See how he can, if he can develop into a Johnny Knox type. I think that's the kind of wide receiver I see in him, but we didn't see much from him this season, and I'm not going into next year depending on anything from him other than to continue to develop. So right now, you just have DJ Moore. Bayless Jones, I don't know if he's going to make this team next year. So, I'm stockpiling. If you look at the Green Bay Packers and how they attacked the wide receiver position in the draft the last two years. Later round guys, though, for right. the pass Ex- draft, Exactly, too. but that's what I'm saying. So if you want to take one at nine, I'd take one at nine, but I'm going to double and triple down in the middle rounds in the back end and try to just bolster up that room with some young talents. I mean, we're, um, we're picking nits here, but they need the other edge, too. That's obvious. Somebody's got to play outside of, uh, opposite of Montez, Montez but, yeah. right? I mean, but and those are harder to find. So if I told you that you found that and you didn't necessarily hit on the wide receiver, that would. It, I mean, you, you, so you'd rather have the wide receiver. I'd, I'd rather have the wide receiver over it. the edge player because okay. that defense was generating some pressure. But that is still going to be a, a need that needs to be solidified because they kind of had a rotating door. You're not going to have. Uh, Yannick Ngakwe back, most likely his his deal is going to be up. And then you have, you know, you had Demarcus Walker out there towards the end of the season, and he's a versatile guy. But, you know, that that defense collectively, they have some playmakers on there. So if they don't necessarily get the stud edge rusher, but they do get the a guy at wide receiver opposite DJ Moore, I think Bears fans are going to be feeling a lot better about themselves um, with how Ryan Poles approached this draft. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor.